Hello everybody, this is Azar. I am Head of Growth at User Pilot, and today we have Philip. Philip, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey guys, my name is Philip. I'm the CEO and founder of Castify, a customer success solution for SaaS companies, reducing churn and retaining revenue. All right, guys. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned quickly in the introduction, we were reaching out to some of our customers that have actually Castify as a customer success solution in place. And uh, we were um, having some calls with them, some interviews with them and trying to find out what are their uh, practical things that they actually do in times of the crisis with their customers. So you might ask like, uh, why at all should you focus on uh, customer success during such a time? I mean, it's going to be almost certain that your business is somewhat affected, um, at least. Maybe it's heavily affected, maybe it's a bit affected, but usually what you see that churn rates increase, uh, that specifically new business rates show up, and that's going to most likely going to be for a while. I mean, we're talking about a bigger recession here. So new business is going to be slower in the next month, if not years. Um, and yeah, companies will also reduce the money they want to spend for eventually your product, right? So that is something that you might want to take into consideration. And that means focusing on the existing customers um, can help you to get over such a crisis because you um, increase the retention um, and in overall, you can uh, increase the customer lifetime value. Um, what we're going to touch today a bit is um, we're going to look a bit at how exposed are you actually, or how can you measure that? What are the KPIs to look at um, when it comes to this and how do you monitor them? What are some strategies that we found out while talking to our customers? And um, what opportunities are still out there? I mean, it's not that the market is not that there are still plenty of opportunities and um, I'm going to show you at least a couple of them. All right, so let's start right off. So I think what makes sense is to talk a bit about measuring and uh, what we saw um, when we talked to our customers, uh, a lot of them started to introduce something like a crisis risk factor as a KPI. So that means basically you go through your customer base and you determine which of those clients are potentially on risk, right? Such as a travel agency or anybody who's in travel right now is potentially heavily infected. Then there's others that are only lightly affected and there's others that might even benefit. So um, it makes a lot of sense to go through your customer base and assign this kind of crisis risk factor to each one of them. Now, there might be tools like in Castify, you could do that, for example, automatically with the segmentation. It depends. Maybe you can do that in your CRM instead. Um, but it makes sense to separate those and monitor those that are heavily affected separately from the rest of your customer base. And you have to get like a lot proactive with these guys. And I'm going to show you later on what that means. But uh, these the, the, the customers that are in this high risk segment, they need your special attention in such a time. Now, what KPIs could you actually monitor and what, what, what options do you have? The generic, let's say, customer success slash even, I would say, companies KPIs that you probably have either in your payment gateway or in other systems, they do not necessarily help to predict problems because let's say you your MMR retention rate goes down. If you see that happening, it's kind of late, right? So if you see your revenue goes down, um, it's kind of too late already, or it's it, the, the, the churn actually happened. Um, same is for uh, account customer or logo churn, uh, um, however you want to call it. But basically, um, customers leaving you, uh, and the more uh, they do, obviously, um, the more you have to work on the existing ones to, to stay with you. Then there are other KPIs that usually um, our customers measure with, with Castify, such as like how long does it time, how long does it take to onboard? Like how long is your sales cycle and how long does it take to onboard new customers? Uh, is that getting harder? That's something that you can also measure within your onboarding process. Now, there are some specific health scores though uh, in, the, in, in times of such a crisis that can really, really um, help you to prevent churn. Now, um, these, let's say, um, Lone Star metrics, and um, these are th usually things um, like, uh, you know, orders per day or daily active users, or this, this Lone Star metric is something that depends a lot on your product. 
when we onboard our new customers, what we usually do is like we have a look at the product and we analyze the product and we um, go on their pricing page, which is a good indicator um, of starting with these for, for and looking for these KPIs. Why? Because these Lone Star metrics, how we call them, or primary KPIs are things um, that you solve, like the pain your product solves. Why do people pay you money? And those are the KPIs that you should really be after in these days. There are some secondary kind of health scores like account engagement, which help, of course, as well. That means like how often do they engage with your product? How often do they log in? How much time do they spend in your product? Um, how many of the users are still using your application? Um, and then it makes sense to kind of make micro segments on these. So before that, you took a bigger segment and saying, okay, I'm putting all the customers that are on risk in one, in one bucket. And now you divide this bucket furthermore into, okay, people that don't log in, people that spend the less time in the product, people that have, um, yeah, their activity shrank a lot between like daily active users um, before the crisis and what you see now. And that means you can target them very specifically on one, what exactly is the, the KPI that you have uh, and that you see there that is uh, endangered. Why? Because every, every of your customers will have a different, will be differently affected by the crisis and every um, customer usually, um, yeah, reacts differently on, on it and needs a, um, yeah, a customized treatment. So uh, it's, it's uh, very important from our point of view to be like really, really specific and not to go out with like mass emailing or, you know, just like send out a, a newsletter like, hey, are you in the crisis? We are here to help you. Uh, that is something very generic. Everybody has in the inbox these days, probably 10 of those emails. And you can make a difference if you are very, very specific and very, very targeted. And when you measure those KPIs, you will know exactly what is actually the problem. And then you can reach out very targetly with your message to them. Um, yeah, and uh, we also talk to the customers like about uh, retention strategies. Now, what can you actually do? Like what are practical examples that we saw people doing from within Castify these days? Now, those customers that are in a vulnerable industry, like uh, they, they are forced to close eventually during the crisis, like, uh, you know, restaurants or travel agencies, manufacturing even. So you can approach those very early. And as soon as you detect uh, decreases in these health scores that we just discussed. Um, that is the key. Like you, you, you want to be in touch with them very, very early. Um, you can like Castify has like something we call playbooks. Um, if you use other tools like marketing automation tools, eventually you might find similar things there. The key is that um, depending on the amount of customers, you might not be able to touch base with them in, on a personal level um, with all your customers simply because you don't have the resources. But we also saw on the other hand though is that some of our customers, they hired third-party resources just to keep in touch with the client personally. So they were hiring people on platforms or they were hiring temporary uh, workers for that just to keep in touch with the customers, to call them and uh, to just have a personal conversation with them. And this personal conversation, um, although like measuring those goals and being like very specific with them helps, but let's imagine you are you rarely call your customers and all of a sudden like you call them and you take a lot of care with them they feel um personally very um taken care of and um yeah we, we come to that later but you might offer them even things like discounts or pausing the accounts and these things like these kind of strategies that i have in a in the in the other slides later on but um, imagine what difference that makes. And if you put yourself in their shoes and imagine that someone really, really takes care of you on a personal level, that makes a huge difference. But you could, you could start like with automated uh, campaigns, like sending an email and inviting them to have a call. And if there's no reply and nothing happens, you can just like directly call them, right? So in generally getting more high touch is a good strategy in the times of crisis. Like if you can afford it, that you can get more high touch it is really a good strategy, even for um, businesses or companies that usually are low touch, even if your plan or your pricing usually doesn't allow to be like very high touch in a sense of you cannot call every customer. In these days, investing some ex extra bucks into that and calling your customers, be there for you. Even like other, like maybe um, your product managers can do those calls as well, not just like uh, people from customer success or support. Uh, so you can look into your, uh, in, into your employee base, who else could do such calls? And it's really, really a good idea to, to uh, increase the touch level and be not, not just emailing them, but also be able to call them these days. 
Now, yeah, as I mentioned, like when you call them or when you email them and what what's practical examples, what can you offer them? Um, so what we saw happening is that some of the customers, they were actually offering um, pausing the subscription. Now, this is a great thing because it is basically means that you don't have a customer that churns. You have a customer that is on pause. Um, and that helps a lot because you keep the relationship alive. You can eventually even say, hey, until you have this crisis, um, over, overcome this crisis, we give you our servers for free. This depends, of course, on what kind of service that you have and what are the costs behind, if you can afford this. Um, but this might be a, a good way to do. Or you'd simply pause the subscription for the next three or four months until you know they got out of the worst um, of the worst part of this crisis. If you have longer trials or trials by several months, there's of course the option also to um, simply extend the, the trial that you have, right? If you have like, let's say a 14 days trial, you could go and say, let's make that a six weeks trial eventually from a two weeks trial. That's, that's another way um, that could uh, definitely help. And preventing people from churning, let's say in your trial or not converting from, from a trial to a paid user, because just right now they cannot afford to convert. They really like the product. And with Castify, for example, you can measure these engagements during the trial. So it most likely doesn't make sense to just like give that to everyone, but you will see uh, customers that are highly engaged with the product during the trial, which are, have a high potential to convert into a, a paid customer. And maybe with those customers specifically, you wanna do such a experiment to extend the trial a bit. Then what we saw happening is uh, people downgrading. So down, if you have these options in your, in your plans, you can downgrade certain, um, certain users. That, that depends on your uh, functionality of the product. But let's say you are a uh, mass e emailing tool um, and your uh, primary, um, primary way of um, um, yeah, getting to your pricing plans is by the amount of emails that you send out. Then you could simply say, okay, hey, why don't we downgrade you guys to a to the lowest plan possible? You can still send emails, but maybe not so much, and you can save like eighty percent of the costs with us. And then once the crisis is over, they go back to normal. That might be in many cases a situation that makes sense because maybe their business is so slow that they don't need you the current plan that they have. Maybe the the smallest plan that you you guys offer could could be um, totally enough for them at this point in time. So downgrading um, as an option, pause for an option. How about free upgrading? Exactly, so um, that is something that can work as well. So you can offer free upgrades to the next plan if you see that helps them, depending on what your plan offers. Maybe that next plan has some things that really, really uh, helps them to get through the crisis. So why don't you upgrade them for free during that time? And that that gives you also the chance later on, once they discover those features of that of the next plan and the crisis is over, they got maybe used to it and they will convert much, much likely to that new plan um, versus if you wouldn't have this crisis, they would maybe never have experienced these, these things in, in your next plan. So that is a potential strategy as well, of course, depending a bit on your product and what you offer. Now, yeah, there are a few other uh, things uh, that can lead to churn. One of them, of course, is people going out of business, right? So if your customer goes out of business, there's usually not much you can do about. Um, the only thing is eventually, if you switch a bit to that high touch model that I mentioned before, you can call and you can figure out, is that, if, for example, a restaurant, right? Are those customers closing down entirely and they will never be back? Or does it make sense um, to call them and to make a reminder and call them in three months and maybe situation recovered, maybe they reboot. Um, every country uh, has different habits here. Um, we saw that happening in Italy, for example. So some things just entirely closed down and then they just reopen later on. So that's something that potentially can happen. So don't throw those users away, keep them there. And if you can afford, like talk to them in person, um, not just to like, uh, yeah, have a sorry to see you go kind of conversation with them but also um, to figure out if there's a way to get them back once the crisis is over. Um, of course, like your customer support is key. So customers are more stressed, more nervous, have less patience, want things to go fast. So make customer success and customer support a priority in this time. It's really, really, really important that you are there for your customers. As I said, shift resources eventually from other departments that you have uh, shift them into these um, customer support or customer relation in general, like customer support and success 
kind of roles and make them talk to your customers. It's, it's really important. I cannot mention it uh, often enough. Um, other things like you lost your champion. I mean, this is typically a situation where you have to, you sell into a, um, yeah, a bit of larger organization usually, where it's a champion that kind of, um, yeah, promoted your solution, um, is also the primary user of the solution and layoffs in these times specifically, uh, in the US um, are a common thing and it's, uh, they will be back eventually, but who knows? So it's very important to figure out, did your, does your uh, champion still use the software or is he gone? And if he's gone, for example, in Castify, you could put things like an automation there, like this is gonna be detected automatically. Let's say your champion um, didn't do any interaction with the product in a given amount of time. And then you could just automatically create a task for your customer success manager and then reach out and find your new champion. That's also very important. Imagine um, there's a team of 10 users. One is a champion, this guy leaves. All of the 10 of them, uh, they don't feel necessarily really responsible to renew the contract. And then the, the manager of this team is coming and saying, hey, so what's about your software? And yeah, they were just like, yeah, we don't know. And then you lose this client. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to just figure out who's the next possible in those, like in, in the group of users who could be the follow-up champion. And then again, get high touch, get in touch with him, call him, um, find new champions. Um, of course, there's one last thing that should never be an issue that is not even related to crisis. So Dunning, um, I guess everybody of you has this problem at, in some way or another. Dunning means like you cannot charge the credit card or your payment uh, method fail. So there, as you know, there are like 513 or something uh, reasons why a, uh, a credit card payment can fail, but um, this should never be a reason. And specifically in those times, you can imagine if budgets are uh, low and strict, it could happen that uh, the credit card doesn't have enough funds. So get your Dunning uh, strategies in place, meaning like pre-Dunning messages in the sense of if you see credit cards going to be expired, get in touch with them, get them updated their credit card. Post-Dunning means um, either get an account updater in, in place or work with a tool like Castify that can then send automatically messages on multiple channels to your customers um, to try to recover these unnecessary, um, yeah, unnecessary churns, I have to say, because yeah, these are usually people who are engaged with your platform. They are happy. Uh, they are a happy user, but you have to cancel their account simply because you cannot charge their credit card. And that's something you never want to have. But I wanted to mention it here because most likely people will see a higher number of these kind of dunnings or a high, higher number of payment problems during the time simply because I mentioned before like budgets and yeah, it might just be a bit more restrictive. Um, so you get, you, you have to get your strategy here in place. And like these days, every payment gateway usually offers the basic dunning, like charge me, recall the uh, Stripe. All those have kind of basic messages there. If you use a tool like Castify or there are some others, you can get a bit more uh, creative in these. So you can combine them with other segmentations of your customers. For example, those high risk customers that I mentioned before, you can get a bit more personal. Uh, you can work with alerts and, um, and these kind of things or yeah, you can even send them uh, WhatsApp or SMS messages. Um, but get this in place because that's that's something that you'd never want to have, like people leaving you um, despite they are happy with your product. Uh, last but not least, there are opportunities, right, that you can eventually uh, go for. Now, this is like I'm speaking myself. So we have a couple of customers that highly benefit from this crisis. Um, so there are really businesses out there that right now they have like even challenges to onboard all their new customers. So those are really, really um, great opportunities for you to, without getting new clients, still increase your uh, monthly revenue just simply by upselling them, right? Um, and that is something, um, of course, it's depending on what kind of service or business that you have, but um, try to figure out um, the same way that you figured out in the beginning, your uh, your on risk customers with assigning them this uh, risk KPI, let's say, find exactly the opposite, like which ones of your customers could potentially benefit from the solution. And if you have like product tracking in place, like in Castify, you would see that, for example, automatically like usage statistics and these things go up, um, reach out to those, so upsell them to do your next plan or uh, seat limits or whatever you have in place and generate some extra bucks here from these customers 
um, because in a crisis is always a chance and there are always also customers or companies that can really benefit also in this one uh, that we currently see. Um, yeah, that's, that's it from my side. That's what we found out when we were talking to our customers these days. So uh, as a conclusion, be proactive with your customers, um, uh, focus on customer success and support, eventually get other positions um, helping out in these departments, increase the headcount there. You don't have to hire new people. You can hire free contractors that do it for you, or you can shift resources within your team. Um, and one thing is really, really important, um, although everybody would tell you cutting costs and keeping managing your costs is, is, is important for you as a company. It is, but don't cut the costs uh, on customer success or don't cut the costs talking to your customers, engaging with your customers, because that is like, this is what you currently have. And it might be what you will have for the next couple of months or even longer because your new business might not uh, take up as fast as this crisis is over. It takes usually a while to for the market to get recover. So don't save costs on um, yeah customer success or talking to your customers. All right, um, that's from everything from my side. Um, I hope you guys can still hear me and everything worked fine. Um, I cannot hear you, Azar. Are you muted or am I? Yeah, thank you for this presentation. Ah, okay, now yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Thank you for this presentation. Okay. It was really, really eye-opening for me as well. Um, and um, guys, feel free to ask questions in the chat. We, I, we both will look at it. But like, I have really interesting question for you. Um, you are also a SaaS company and um, you must have also gone through the same um, churn uh, cancellation what did you do actually like to to do that like what, what what happened with you guys and what did you do because this is like very yeah. interesting case and i can tell you what we did so you can also we can also great question yeah great question so um yeah the what we did is uh, partially of the the things that i presented so po offering pauses for subscriptions um that's definitely something and we we also did this assignment of risk scores Luckily for us, uh, it wasn't that we had like uh, high risk customers a lot, like maybe three, four, like only a handful of cu customers that have really, really trouble these days. Basically, their revenue went down to zero uh, because they were, for example, in sports or they are in uh, travel. Uh, that is, of course, uh, a, a, a industry that you just proactively um, pause their accounts. And that's what we did also. So we just pause their accounts. We know they're going to come back. We know. For example, you know, football games are coming back. It's not going to be forever that they that they don't happen. So it makes a lot of sense to pause them. So that was definitely um, we implemented some of these strategies that you saw there ourselves. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what we did was like um, so instead of like just canceling their account, um, we we started giving like also pause. But more importantly, we the, we gave them like kind of a discount that can still they they, they keep paying us, but like not that much of money, so that um, um, it helps them to say, okay, you know, I save money somehow and, and they still value the, uh, the first and most important thing, what we did, we did was we looked at their engagement already. We said, okay, you know, they are already using these features. They are finding value. They, they are in mm -hmm. this sector. So what, what first we did that analysis and then we gave them some kind of a help package. Um, also like initially, I think we did that, but no more. I think we, we, we tried to extend a bit of trial. But we saw that in SaaS industry for us, um, it didn't impact that much. And if you look at profit well chart metrics, you will see that SaaS B2B SaaS is not getting impacted actually. So um, for us, it didn't, not that it, didn't, yeah. it didn't matter at, at all um, in, in B2B SaaS. We had some people, but only travel restaurants or yeah. those industries that were really at the edge. So um, there are a couple of questions that I have. Uh, um, one question before I let everybody on is that this, the crisis is not, not getting over in any time soon. Uh, okay, like, okay, Germany is opening, you know, we have a, a better health system, so we know that we can plan effectively and we are always prepared, you know. Um, but like people in US, people outside of, uh, I would say, better prepared countries like Australia, New Zealand and others, um, it's not getting over. So what do you advise 
to the participants here like uh, it, maybe it takes like one year and so do you, do you keep the pause on till one year that, that that's that's a question there as well yeah uh, um i think yeah it's it's really hard to say right now right so nobody really knows this crisis i mean uh, there are these predictions and definitely it's going to be in, in my opinion it's going to be industry wise so there's industry heavily in fact affected by this crisis and then there's industry non affected almost by the crisis um and you're right it might take a year or it might take more to pick up so when is a good time for you to say like okay this customer most likely won't come back now the question is like um do you have any um do you have any problem like pausing the subscription in the sense of like does this cost you money if it doesn't cost you money um and you can still just pause it there's probably no reason to just cancel it right i would probably just leave it open keep in touch with them see what's going on and then revise your strategy maybe in a couple months from now but now definitely is way too early in, in that stage cool cool so we have two questions actually um you can see in the chat if you yeah i saw yeah the reaction it's a good question so yeah i mean for us when we when we paused those subscriptions they were like super appreciating that of course um and they said like uh, yeah we will not forget uh, that you guys helped us out um, that much in that crisis so I can de definitely tell from my own experience, if you, it's very much appreciated from, the, from your customers if you do these kind of things. And um, it's just like helping out each other and they, they will definitely be an advocate afterwards, like uh, for sure. Like if you want to have case studies or anything with these guys, they're going to be number one in your line because uh, yeah, you, they will not forget what you did for them. And if it's possible and you leave the service even accessible for them in that, in that moment, like, right? So if you even like let them use your software, but basically for free for two, three months, they will definitely not forget that and definitely come back to you uh, with great uh, positive spirit. Yeah, yeah. So we had like a one startup that 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 was the first one actually asking for cancellation. Um, and um, they asked for cancellation. So what we did was we, we paused them and we said, you can use the software for free. And he was so appreciative. He said, like, you know what? Um, after three months, just start the subscription already. So they were really, really mm -hmm. appreciative. Um, and um, if somebody is using your software and keep getting value out of it, and you know there's a genuine case, um, I, I wouldn't hesitate to help them out. And especially what I also did, like a couple of my, 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 my leads or my customers, I said, hey, this is my calendar. Just feel free to book a time. I'm ahead of growth. I can help you out with a couple of strategies. And there are, I know for sure a lot of other SaaS companies that actually were like started a new business or let's say a new free nonprofit project to help those people out so i remember mm -hmm. there was this SaaS company proof they actually created a website to help restaurants owner sell uh, online without any any pricing so let them move them complete into del delivery model so i think this is like what we need to do we need to be more human here and so that was a reaction there yeah there's another question about playbooks so i'd like to hear more about those playbooks you mentioned um i'm also very curious because you've also talked to me in in your demo by the way we all we are also customer customers and uh, so I, I would also like to learn more about uh, this, this specific yeah so the so the playbooks uh, are basically the an automation engine that we have in the product and um it can the it's very powerful because it can take any sensor data and we take, um, if you guys are not so familiar with customer success software, how this works is we are really deeply integrated in the um, economy of your SaaS, meaning we are connected to your payment gateway. We know if there's a payment problem. We get the data from the CRM, so we know, the, we know this kind of stuff. And then we get the product analytics, meaning like someone clicks a button or in interacts with your product. And because all this comes together, you can create these very specific triggers for this uh, playbooks, like a start trigger to start such an automation. And um, yeah, then this, this means that you can, uh, yeah, you can reach out very, very targeted to a specific group that has a specific problem. Uh, because someone that doesn't use feature A might want a different messaging that someone uses, doesn't use a feature B. Now, if you just treat both of them as uh, low usage and send them the same message is way not that personal as if you would like interact with them in a way that hey you know feature a does this and here's uh, as you said like maybe you offer them a calendly link and hey here's a 15 minute calendly link i show you again how this works how this can help you to get through the crisis or you can like go there very specific also with the crisis so you can go and say hey we have this in this feature that really helps your customers to use your product better specifically now in these times so you can like 
um, yeah, talk about that. So playbooks overall is something like, uh, yeah, you can imagine as an automation engine where you can really drag drop easily actions like email or in product message, or we have, for example, an integration, um, also, um, um, with third party things like, uh, yeah, Zapier, for example. So you can trigger whatever other 1500 apps that you might have in, uh, in Zapier from such a playbook. And, um, that means you can interact with your customers on various channels and very personalized. That's the whole idea and kind of automated. So you will not forget, or you, you don't need to go through every customer and say, does he use the product? Does he use the product? Does he have like interaction with me? Because that playbook basically tells you everything and just does it automatically. Good. Um, by the way, I just have like one last action for people. Um, I'm sharing a product growth and attention community. We have this community on Facebook. Um, maybe you don't have questions right now. Maybe you have later on. Feel free to join. We are happy to help. Um, it's all about helping people out. It's just a small community, just trying to grow it so that we can help people out. Um, feel free to join it. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. We are here um, and um, answer any questions. If there are any, any difficult questions that you think that would be helping you, just feel free to ask. We have a specialist here. So this guy is helping a lot of companies out and also us as well. So why not? Yeah, and if there are questions from the audience that watch the recording, you are of course free to reach out to us. Uh, I guess both of us afterwards, absolutely welcome and uh, happy to help also for those who couldn't be here live cool. today. Um, I can quickly give people your Calendly link. Um, if you just share with me um, your link, if you have some. Uh, the best way to approach me is uh, through the contact form on our website. I do not have a personal Calendly link, so we have a team one, but it's the best if they want to talk to me. What, what um, about reaching out to you reach... personally? Exactly, yeah. Just I'm going to type my email address here in the chat, right? So while you're answering, uh, writing that email, I, Renuka is asking, how do the efforts on reviving the churned customers sound in this period? So I'm trying to understand Renuka, what exactly she's asking. Do you get it? Um, not a hundred percent, maybe. Uh, Renuka, you can uh, specify it a bit more. Um, so the efforts on um, uh, keeping the churned customers um like maybe maybe how it's in percentage or how many you can um you can keep from churning so i've turned on the video and um i think uh mic for you if you wanna and you can just speak to us here we are here to talk to you so just like turn on your microphone and ask if you have any question and want to clarify Cool. So while she's asking, I also have one more question for you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Go yes, ahead. Anika. I was just uh, wondering, like we have uh, customers which, which are there in our list, which have churned in the past. So uh, at this point of time, if we have uh, developed any features in the product, which will help them in this time of their crisis. So is it good that we approach the churn customers during this period? And if yes, then uh, what could be a, uh, uh, what could be the approach? Cool. Ah, so the ones that already churned, yeah. uh, that's, that's the question. Uh, when did they churn? Before the crisis? Yeah, before the or... crisis, yes. Hmm. Um, I would say it depends. I mean, in general, I would say winback is a tough market. So getting like, in usually like when you, when you do winback campaigns, the, the percentage of getting customers back to your solution is probably in the lower one digit range, usually from st just simply statistically speaking. Um, and in this crisis might be even lower. So I wouldn't say that this, the, that this should be your primary focus of attention. I would rather focus on the ones that you have still. And, and as I mentioned, like spend time with them rather than um, uh, approaching ones that, that left you already. Okay. So uh, my opinion, uh, just, just to give you, like we have like customers who churned previously. And um, if you know them, they are not from the danger zone industry and they have churned. Um, I would actually, instead of selling them something and telling them come back, I would give them like a free time from my side and say, hey, let's, let's just talk about like, if we can help you somehow, if it's not even use like a specific topic or my software related and try to start a conversation again. 
if the conversation starts again, mean that they are still interested in talking to you. And when they are on the call, perhaps you can start this topic. Like, so instead of selling them and say, hey, you want to come back? I would rather like start a conversation. And that's that's how I would restart the whole process. That's what I would do. I mean, that's my opinion. OK, OK. Thanks, Sambu. Yeah. Cheers. So there's another question by Asim. Um, if you could share the playbooks you have mentioned in the document and how we can integrate different devices, apps. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the playbooks, they are very specific. Um, so I would say it's not something that, you know, applies for anyone. This is really specific on your business because, uh, first of all, the, the risk customers are, are different for each one. Then the way that you reach out to them is very specific. So each one of our customers, when, when, when the ones that we talked to before this uh, webinar and the ones that we got uh, in touch with to get all the content that you saw here, uh, each one of them has different kind of playbooks in place, uh, very specific to their product, very specific to their customer base. Um, it depends, for example, we have uh, customers that are very high touch uh, by general. So they sell a product uh, that is usually more expensive. They sell it to enterprises. So they are, they, their typical way of keeping in touch with customer is high touch, meaning calls, uh, um, quarterly business meetings, these kind of things. Um, and for them is uh, different and they have this high touch anyway, for them is different than someone who has a um, very low touch plan and sells the product for 20 bucks and usually is only on email automation. But we did also case studies, for example, uh, recently with one of our customers to prove that even in those cases where you have a product that you would say is totally low touch and it's never worth to call this customer, in those situations or in other situations, it's totally worth to call customers and it's totally worth to spend five minutes with them on the phone. The return of investment is like 10x or more, even for these guys, because we talk always subscriptions. So we talk recurring revenue, meaning this five minute call, if this prevents this customer from churning, he pays the 20 bucks, not tomorrow, but also in a month from now and two months and three months and so forth. So you have to take that into consideration when it's when it's when it comes on to that, you know, internal discussions, maybe. And maybe you have team members that say, hey, uh, it's absolutely not worth. We cannot do this calling. Give it a try. Try it out. Measure. And um, you might be surprised. Cool. Cool. So just to let you know, like playbooks are like a, it's like a automation system in place for for for, for Custify. It's not a, like a document that you can just download and follow it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a software, uh, and I also wouldn't have known if I would have used Customify. Um, but like, just to let you know, this is like very, very customized to your own software. Like, what features, what events they are doing, who who are these people, what segments are you talking about? So, like, these are very personalized to each software. So maybe Philip can give you a demo and show you later on how it actually works. So maybe you get an idea something. Yeah. There is on there is a screenshot how this looks like a bit on slide eleven when it's when we talk about the customer. Um, is in a vulnerable industry there is this like actions and you can imagine a bit like drag drop and these actions that follow there there, there is a small screenshot how this looks like just to uh, imagine it in the product gotcha cool um if nobody has questions so far we are happy to um, close this but if you have any questions this is the last minute where you can ask questions um so we can continue going on or we just stop because this webinar was for 45 minutes um yeah let's see if somebody has questions yeah, so I think Asim will reach out to you for the demo and maybe ask you. Stuff. Sure. Yeah. Great. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. you, Philip. Appreciate your Thanks time. Thanks for the invitations. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate your time. Appreciate you. And yeah, as you say, let's let's hold together um, in these times. Um, let's let's build a community of SaaS companies and let's help each other as much as Great. we can. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for the content and coming here. Have a good day. Was a pleasure, was a pleasure. Likewise. Bye, -bye. Bye guys.